shipment of medical supplies from the UK to India has arrived there this morning. There's other international help too, but what India is battling is on an immense scale. Hundreds of thousands of new infections a day and hospitals and individuals trying to purchase oxygen wherever they can. Dr. Zarir Udwadia works in two of Mumbai's biggest private hospitals and is also on a committee of doctors advising the government on the city's COVID response. Um, he joins us this morning. Morning, Dr. Udwadia. Michelle, good morning. Lovely to be speaking to you. Uh, thanks for taking the time because I know you've been at work in, um, in the hospital today. What have you seen? I have indeed. The situation is beyond crisis point, Michelle. This virus has a country of 1.4 billion firmly in a stranglehold. And it's really exposed our threadbare healthcare system and our failure of leadership, hasn't it? What have I seen in rounds in three hospitals? I started at 7 a.m. And I see ward after ward full of patients struggling to breathe on oxygen, on ventilators of different forms and shapes. And it's really clear to me, as it is to any physician, that this wave, perhaps variant driven, we don't know for sure, is far more infectious and probably much more lethal than the first wave. I see younger patients afflicted. I've lost two 35 year olds, husband and wife on ventilators uh, a day ago. Uh, and it's really exposed uh, the dreadful deficiencies in our public health. Why did those deficiencies happen, do you think? It's years of uh, disinvestment. We spend less than 1% to 2% of, on our GDP, and we will uh, 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 keep on ramping up our defence budget, for example. But we are in the mess we are just now because of complacency from the government. We let down our collective guard, and we were urged to by our leaders. Instead of being asked to be vigilant, we heard self-congratulatory declarations of victory. We thought we'd won when we, because of luck, seemed to be conquering the first wave. And all that has been cruelly exposed as mere self-assured hubris. Then there is the glacially slow pace of vaccine uh, rollout. 5% of this country vaccinated, unlike the inspiring example the UK has said that. We are 600 days away at this rate from even reaching close to herd immunity. Uh, in an act of largest, we've been donating vaccines to our neighbours without doing the maths. This country needs 2 billion doses at the very least. Sorry, 600 days away. It's... Absolutely. At this two present years. rate. years. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, there was initial vaccine hesitancy, vaccine scepticism, like there is in many parts of Europe. But now there is indeed vaccine desperation. And as I drove into hospital, which also doubles up as a vaccine centre, there were long... Uh, serpent-like lines outside the hospital. Again, no, no, no safeguards in terms of three meters distance, of course. The luxury of that doesn't exist in India anyway. And uh, often when they come for their vaccine, they often pick up COVID in crowded centers, just waiting and desperately jostling to get their vaccine. So, I mean, you, you describe the situation as being beyond crisis point, that, you know, that, that sh shortages on, on every front. The, the kind of help that's coming in now, what the UK has sent is just a, a first shipment, um, oxygen concentrators, ventilators. I mean, yours yes, is a, yours uh, is a very large country. Absolutely. It's a, it's a drop in the ocean. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a political gesture. This will have a limited impact at this stage, sadly. We are, we are past the stage of that. Uh, the U.S. is sitting on a pile of Astra Oxford vaccines, millions which they aren't using. Clearly, some die of too little and some die of too much. Surely such vaccines should be donated to India. As you know, the Oxford Astra is manufactured in a plant in Pune, but it just can't keep up with the need and the capacity that is required. But th that, I mean, so that, that's, that that's one of the great ironies of all of this, isn't it? That you have got a country which is the absolute powerhouse of vaccine production that has ended up in this state with its second wave of COVID. Well, again, we patted ourselves on the back, telling ourselves we were vaccine producers uh, for the world. And uh, the government lapped up this hype. Uh, they wanted to set the price. They wanted to be the only buyer. They wanted to decide how much private hospitals could sell the vaccine for. And they didn't ramp up production and just were lulled by complacency uh, in the early stages, January or February, when the rollout started. There were no takers, medical colleagues. Uh, of mine refused to take the vaccine saying oh COVID seems to be over why do we need one and now there is a desperate clamor for vaccines. Dr. Zarir Udwadia thanks very much for talking to us this morning in, in the midst of you're everything right. that you're dealing with in the hospital thank you.